OK, let's get uh, back to it. So um, we're going to go over a couple of like little things for the next couple uh, or next maybe 30 minutes. Um, and then we're going to transition into developing your own models. Um, so there's, I'm going to cover uh, power modeling, um, but this is going to be quite quick and quite high level um, for a couple of reasons that I'll get into. But uh, just to, I don't know, give myself a little bit of a caveat here, I developed these slides like yesterday. So it might not be as smooth as some of the other things that we've done. But power modeling is something I'm asked about a lot, so I wanted to make sure to at least touch on it. OK, so we're going to talk a little bit about the idea behind power modeling. We're going to use the math expression power model in Gym 5 and, and go over a quick example. Um, OK, so Gym 5 supports, actually internally within Gym 5, um, activation count based power models. So these are things that are kind of like McPat or Watch. Um, but it can be done from within Gym 5. So in the past, a lot of people have used things like MidPat with Gym 5 by running Gym 5, getting all the statistics, processing those statistics, and then feeding that into MidPat. But we can do all this from within Gym 5 as well. So the way these power models work is for each of your um, uh, components in the system, you determine the power of that component by taking some number of activations. So in this case, this is a cache so that we're going to look at. Um, so we're going to take the number of times the cache was accessed. That costs some amount of energy. And the number of times the cache, a number of misses. That costs some energy. So maybe each miss, you have to access the MSHRs. That costs some energy. Every single access, you have to um, check the tags and get the data. And that costs some other energy. So then we're doing power. So we need to divide by the time as well. Um, so these numbers I completely made up, these 18 and 1 microjoules. This is what we'll use in our example. Again, completely made up numbers. Um, you can get these numbers from things like cacti or McPat, but I would caution you to be very, very careful with those numbers that you get. I can talk offline about how they can be misleading, but just be very careful. OK, so the power model's in Gym 5. So Gym 5 has a generic power model that, define, that you have to define a couple of functions, the get dynamic power and get static power. Um, every single sim object can have a power model. And you can actually have power models for different power states. So you can have a power model for the on state, a power model for the off state, a power model for um, clock gated state, SRAM retention state, and you could add other states as well. Gym 5 also has a thermal model, which I won't be talking about because I don't know how to use it, but it exists. Um, and the thermal model is essentially some kind of like RC circuit model for thermals. Um, like I said, I won't be talking about the thermal model. Um, you can see the details if you go into the Gym 5 source sim power directory. Um, today we're going to be looking at the math expression power model, which is relatively easy to use. Um, but you can also extend um, the power models to make your own kind of power model if you want to do something more. Uh, complex. Um, within the next few months, I hope, by the next release, there, we're going to have a new kind of power model, which allows you to just write arbitrary power, uh, arbitrary Python functions that will then be evaluated to compute the power. So it'll be kind of like the math expression power model, except Python instead of strings, as we'll see in a second. Um, any, any questions so far? OK. So the math expression power model, uh, this is what we're going to use in our example. Um, essentially, it allows you to specify a math expression, kind of what, like what we saw a couple slides ago, um, and use that as the uh, model that you're using for power. You can, in this math expression, you can use statistics. So things like cache accesses, cache misses are available. Um, there's other things available as well, such as voltage and the uh, temperature from your thermal model can also be used to feed in. And then the power can then feed into the thermal model, so you can have um, feedback there. The voltage comes from the voltage domain, which we haven't seen this yet, but each um, most sim objects that are integrated into your system have a clock domain and a voltage domain associated with them. Um, and you can actually, you can do DBFS 
and change these dynamically, although we don't have any examples of that. Um, a couple of caveats. I know I'm giving you lots of caveats. Um, Gem5 is not going to uh, give you any of the constants that you need to develop your power model. So you have to figure out on your own what you think the cost of accessing the cache is. Um, though we do have some ideas on how we might be able to present some power model, uh, some of these constants in the future. Um, and in our example, you're going to see some weird hacks because the standard library doesn't really support power models right now. That's another thing that hopefully Gem5 24.1 work better on. Um, and yeah, I can't emphasize this enough. Be really, really careful when you're using power models. OK, so let's look at our example here. So we are going to start with the same three-level cache that we used, that we developed um, yesterday when I was uh, talking to you all. Um, so if you're in the 0, 2, gem 5, 10 modeling power, uh, three-level.py, this will look very similar to what we saw before, except I've added a little bit more code. Um, so we have this thing, class L3 power model at the bottom, and this power model um, takes in a parameter, which is the L3 path, we'll see what that is in a minute, and then it has a self.pm, which is a list of power models for different power states. So by default, the power states are on, clock-gated, SRAM retention, and off. We are going to use the off for all the power models except for the on, um, because we're not going to be switching um, into these different power states. And so the power off, we're simply going to set the dynamic and static power to zero. So what we're going to do is build an L3 on power model. So for that, um, what I'm going to do is just copy this out of the slides. So you can preview the slides in VS Code and easily copy-paste out of them. So I'm going to copy-paste this. So this is exactly the same um, equation that we saw on the slides before, where we're going to take the number of overall accesses to the L3. Um, we're, we're just adding a power model to the L3. We're going to take the number of overall accesses, multiply that by 18 microjoules, take the number of L3 misses, multiply that by one uh, microjoule. And then static power, I don't know, this is totally made up, but I'm going to take three times the voltage divided by 10 is my static power. Um, so where did I get this overall accesses? Well, I looked at my stats file from a previous run, and this was one of the stats uh, that's available. The overall misses is another stat that was available. You can use any stat um, in the stats.txt file. OK. So now that we have this power model, um, we need to set the power model on the L3 cache. So if you scroll up a little bit here, um, I added a new function to the uh, cache hierarchy, which is add power model. Um, so again, this isn't supported in the standard library yet. Um, so we have to do a little bit of um, gymnastics uh, to try to get this to work. The power model needs to be added after connect things has been called, so we know what all the different components in the system are. Um, but just before m5.instantiate is called. Um, so we need to have this separate function um, which adds the power model. So we're going to say the self.l3 cache.power model is this L3 power model that we uh, created below. And then we're going to pass um, the self.l3 cache. So the L3 cache is our sim object. Um, all sim objects have a um, function called dot path, which gives you the full qualified string name for that sim object. Um, so we're going to give that path to it. So this is exactly what you'll see printed like in the stats.txt file. Um, and then the other thing we'll do is set the default state for the power state to be on for this model. OK. So after that, let's look at the test cache um, uh, script. So again, there's some hacking going on. Um, you can just completely ignore this. Uh, but the, the important thing is that we need to add this function here uh, to set the power model on the board. Um, and so we're going to call board.get cache hierarchy, call that add power um, model function. Um, but that's already written for you. OK, so now we can run this. Um, it's 
sorry, this was the Gem5 compile I was told not to touch. Um, Materials, 0, 2, 10, power modeling, and then run Gem5 test cache. Um, this is just running the linear generator again. So that's done already. So now we can look at the um, stats.txt file. Um, and if you search for um, power model, it didn't work. Okay. What did I forget to do? It definitely worked in the uh, completed directory, so I must have forgotten to add something. Apologies for it not working, but we'll go back to the slides and see what it's supposed to do. So if it had worked correctly, then when you looked at the stats.txt um, and looked for the power model, uh, you would see this as the result. Um, what I want to point out is that this says that the L3 cache dynamic power is two kilowatts. Clearly, that's wrong. So again, I want to emphasize, be really, really careful with these power models. If you don't use reasonable numbers, they can get, uh, even if you use reasonable numbers, they can get out of hand and give you really weird results um, very quickly. So that's all I have here. I just kind of want to introduce the idea of the uh, map expression power models. And if in the future you want to try to build power models, this is kind of the way that we hope to do it in the future.